How do you test a starter on a vehicle? I'll first quickly review starter basics. If you already have a good grasp of this, feel free to use the chapter markers and skip this section to jump right into the testing. The starter has two parts, the motor and the solenoid. The motor is the part that spins. It makes contact with the flywheel or flex plate and starts the engine. Like every component on a vehicle, the motor requires a power and ground to operate. The ground comes from the metal case, which means it's always grounded. Now we couldn't also give it straight battery power because the motor would always be spinning. Therefore, we have to control the power to the motor by turning it on and off. This is done through the solenoid. The main battery positive cable goes to the solenoid. Inside the solenoid is a plunger with two contacts. When the plunger closes, it bridges the two contacts and allows the battery positive to go to the motor, making it spin. Just like the motor, the solenoid needs power and ground to operate. It also receives its ground from the metal case. The power, known as the trigger wire, is usually controlled through a relay. When the relay contacts close, power is sent to the solenoid, closing the plunger inside. There are 10 different tests in this video on the starter and its circuits. That's a lot of tests, and you don't need to do each one for every starter. I'm just providing different options to help you, depending on the symptoms you have. Feel free to jump to a specific test to learn how to do it. I'm gonna make all my tests with the starter relay removed. This will make testing easier because I can control the starter without turning the key. The first test is bypassing the starter relay. This is a great test because you don't have to access the starter, which can be difficult to get to on some vehicles, and all you need is a fused jumper wire. I'm using a 10 amp fuse, which works for most starters. Some might need a 15 amp. You can always check to see the rating of the fuse that feeds the starter you are testing. If the vehicle you're testing has a manual transmission, it's very important before you do this test that you put it into neutral. If the car is in gear when you do this test, it's gonna leap forward. With the relay removed, I'll use a jumper wire to apply power to the terminal that goes to the solenoid. If the starter turns and cranks with the fuse jumper wire, you know everything on this side is good. There are four terminals for where the relay goes, and I need to figure out which terminal goes to the starter solenoid. If you look at the relay, you see four terminals. The two smaller terminals that are not copper are designed for lower current and they operate the relay itself. The starter solenoid is gonna need a lot of current to operate, so it's gonna use these two larger copper terminals. A positive 12 volt is gonna come in on one, and when the relay closes, we'll go out on the other to the solenoid. I just need to figure out which copper terminal goes to the solenoid. I can see where the copper terminals go by how the relay fits, so I know one of these terminals has to go to the solenoid. Now I could take my fuse jumper wire, stick it in one terminal to see if the starter cranks, and if it doesn't, stick it in the other. Most of the time that's okay, but there are a few cars that could be risky on. So instead, I'll use Devo to see which terminal has the 12 volt positive. I'm using the positive channel, you want load mode on. I'm in voltage available, but you could be in VLOS if you prefer. I'm testing both terminals, and you can see neither has 12 volts. Some vehicles require key on, and others, like this one, only have 12 volts when cranking. I have the key in the crank position now, and you can see this is the terminal that has 12 volts. That means this other terminal goes to the starter solenoid. Now I can safely apply power using the fuse jumper cable. The starter cranks, so I verified all of this is good. If you did the relay bypass test and the starter didn't crank, or the fuse in your jumper leads popped, then you'll wanna perform this next test. It's called an integrity test. It checks the integrity of the trigger wire and the solenoid. It's similar to testing resistance or continuity, but it tells you a lot more. In this one test, I'll know if the wire or solenoid is open, has high resistance, or is shorted to a power or ground. The integrity test is really easy to do. Connect the negative channel on Devo to the terminal that goes to the solenoid. Load mode on, doesn't matter if you're in VLOS or V. Most vehicles will be in the range of 0.01 to 0.15 volts, depending on how long the trigger wire is and how many connectors it goes through before getting to the starter solenoid. If you see 0.00 volts or the value is lower than expected, there could be a short to ground. To find out if the short is in the trigger wire or the starter solenoid, disconnect the trigger wire at the starter solenoid. The value on the negative channel should immediately go high and be within 0.02 volts of battery with a red LED. Anything else indicates a short to ground in the trigger wire. If the integrity test shows above 0.15 volts, it indicates high resistance. The higher the number, the more resistance. 
If it shows almost the same as battery, you have an open. To find out if the resistance is in the trigger wire or the solenoid, unplug the trigger wire at the solenoid. Leave the negative channel at the relay terminal and connect the positive channel to the other end of the trigger wire. Keep load mode on. Cycle the V if you're not already in it. If the values are within 0.02 volts of each other, the trigger wire is good and the resistance is in the solenoid. If the numbers are more than 0.02 volts of each other, there is high resistance in the trigger wire. You can eliminate the trigger wire and test just the solenoid. Keep the trigger wire disconnected. Use the negative channel and connect it to the solenoid. Load mode on. V loss or V doesn't matter. Typical ranges here are 0.01 to 0.03 volts. Anything less than that indicates a short in the solenoid, and more than that indicates high resistance or an open in the solenoid. You can also connect your fuse jumper wires right here to see if the starter cranks. Now we're going to get into some voltage drops to the starter. What's great about the way that I'm going to do this is that I'm going to be able to test three things all at once. The minimum voltage the battery drops while cranking, the voltage drop across the B plus cable to the starter, and the voltage drop to the case ground of the starter. Connect the negative channel to the case of the starter. Make sure you have a good connection because often the case can be coated, you can have dirt or corrosion on it, and all of those things will affect your reading. Connect the positive channel to the B plus terminal on the starter. Load mode is on. V loss or V, that's your preference. Both channels show green LEDs and zero volts dropped, which is good, but you have to perform this test cranking for accurate results. I'm going to pause it here so you can take a look at these values. The spec for the minimum voltage the battery should reach is 9.6 volts at 70 degrees. This battery voltage stayed around 11.5 volts, so that's great, it passed. While the voltage drop on the positive and negative circuits fluctuated, they averaged around 0.1 volts. A typical spec is under 0.2 volts, so that means both the positive and ground circuits to the starter are good. Next, I'm going to test the contacts inside the solenoid. Now, you only need the positive channel for this one. Connect it to the output of the solenoid. This is the short, heavy-duty wire that goes to the motor. It's called the M terminal. You want load mode on, V loss or V, your preference, and crank the engine. I'll pause it here. You see 0.18 volts. Anything under 0.3 volts is within spec, so the contacts inside the solenoid are good. The next test is the voltage drop on the entire trigger or signal wire. To be able to test the entire signal circuit, I'm going to have to put the starter relay back in. This means I'll be using the ignition switch to crank the vehicle. Back probe the trigger wire connector. Attach the positive lead to the back probe, and then plug in the trigger wire connector. Connect the other end of the test lead to the positive channel on Devo. Load mode on, your choice of V or VLOS. I'm removing the relay for the fuel injectors to prevent the vehicle from starting so I have a longer time of cranking to get stable results. I'll pause it here so you can see the voltage drop is 0.9 volts. Textbooks may say this is high, but this is a known good and it's common to see higher voltage drops in the circuit because of the amount of current demand for the solenoid and how many components it goes through. A quick glance at the schematic shows from the battery, it goes through a fusible link, splice, another fuse, an inline connector, the ignition switch, another connector, and then another connector after that to the starter relay and finally to the connector of the solenoid. And there's a lot of wire that goes in between all of that. So with all of these different components and connections that go in between this, that's why that voltage drop is so high. If this voltage drop was over one volt, then I'd start trying to pinpoint where exactly that excess voltage was coming from. But anything under one volt for most vehicles is perfectly acceptable. The last two tests are current draw, and I'll start by testing the amperage through the B plus cable. The motor can spike at around 600 amps and have a continuous draw of 60 to 250 amps, depending on the vehicle. Start by turning load mode off, and then cycle to V if you're not already in it. I'm using an external amp clamp. This one has a BNC connector, so I'll use this adapter to 4mm banana. If your clamp already has banana connectors, you don't need this adapter. The adapter has a ground and signal. Connect the signal to either channel on Devo. I'm using the positive channel and the ground to a known good ground. Turn the clamp on and zero it if needed. Amp clamps should have an arrow on them for the direction they need to face. If you're measuring amps on a positive circuit, it needs to point to the component. 
because I'll be connecting this around the B plus starter cable, the arrow will face towards the starter. Crank the vehicle. I'll pause it here. You see 0 0.08 volts, that's 80 millivolts. The scale on this clamp is every one millivolt equals one amp. So 80 millivolts equals 80 amps. That's within spec, so the motor is good. If it's below spec, it could indicate low battery voltage, a defective starter, or high resistance in the B plus starter cable or case ground. With Debo, it's easy enough to see your battery voltage during cranking to know if that's the problem. And I showed earlier in the video how to test voltage drop to find resistance problems. If the value is higher than spec, this indicates an internal short in the starter or physical resistance the starter is encountering while cranking, such as a seized engine. Now I'll test the current draw for the starter solenoid. I'm gonna use a smaller amp clamp with a lower range so I can get better accuracy. Connect it the same way as the other clamp. Again, load mode off, V on, use either channel on Devo. I'm gonna use the positive channel here again. Switch the clamp on, zero the clamp, and connect it around the trigger wire with the arrow pointing towards the starter. Crank the engine. I'll pause it. I get 0 0.49 volts. That's 490 millivolts. The scale on this clamp is every 100 millivolts equals one amp. So that's 4.9 amps. Solenoids can range from two to three amps on the low end to 15 amps on the high end with most around seven amps. This solenoid is in range, so it's good. And there you have a bunch of different ways to test a starter. Again, you're probably not gonna go through all of these tests for every starter. We just wanted to provide different options for you depending upon the vehicle you're testing. Let us know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.